Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Doing something a little bit different today. I've had some uh, major camera equipment malfunctions. I had several pieces of equipment die on me just today. It's a little odd, so I'm gonna be making some new purchases this weekend. I wanted to do this video though because I was excited to share uh, something that I just used for the first time. It's a new label company that I've never used up until now, but also something else they sent me to check out as well, and that is an automatic label dispenser. And so I've taken a couple days to test this out, and I want to give my feedback to you and share my results on not just the labels, but also that label dispenser. Now, many of you have asked me uh, what I do for my labels. I have a lot of different labels and uh, they have different designs and they're printed on different materials. So I plan on doing a future video that goes into the, to the nitty gritty into the weeds about how I actually design my labels, how I print them, where I have them printed at, because I use a few different places for different purposes. But today we're gonna to be talking about Sticker Mule. So if you're unfamiliar with them, I will have a link to their website in the description below. Also, if you use that link in the description below, you will get an automatic $10 instantly added to your account that you can use uh, to try them out or for whatever labels you might already need. So before we get started, I just wanna say thank you all for being here as usual. If you're new to this channel, my name is Wade, here with Black Tie Barn. On this channel, we do a lot of videos talking about candle making and selling candles, some of the behind the scenes business stuff as well. So we do a lot of variety all related to the candle making or handcrafted industry in general. So if you're not already a subscriber, please go ahead and consider subscribing below. And uh, yeah, let's have some fun. Let's talk about Sticker Mule. So full transparency, uh, I've only bought a couple things so far from Sticker Mule. The majority of what I'm gonna be showing today, they did provide to me for free to sample out, to try out, and then to also give my feedback and share my experiences with all of you here on the video. So I just wanna make sure I get that out. So the first thing I wanna mention about Sticker Mule is the simplicity of it. So if you've used other label companies before, you will notice a wide variety of different paper types. And a lot of people are stuck right from the very get-go on what type of paper, what type of label should you be using? There's all these different types of materials out there, so it can get a little bit overwhelming. And Sticker Mule has made it very simple and straightforward, and they use the label, the paper type is White Bop, White B-O-P-P, -P, which is the most popular commonly used label type anyways. So chances are, if you've purchased labels from other companies, you probably went with that anyways. There are exceptions, of course, that you might need for other purposes, but for the majority of all cases, White Bop material is gonna be the most common. So with that being said, on these labels I'm gonna show you, they're all the same material type. They just have a few different designs, a few different shapes, and I wanna talk about what I think of them so far. So one thing I wanted to go ahead and sample was some wax melt labels. I needed some new wax melt labels. In fact, if any of you bought any labels from me, uh, wax melts from me recently, you'll notice they probably didn't have a warning label on them because I ran out. Oops, <laughs> so I needed some anyway, so I thought, well, this is a great opportunity to try a, a sample of wax melt labels. And so this is what uh, they ended up looking like. Um, I actually changed the design again since then. I did not stick with this uh, for a couple of reasons, but uh, the quality of the labels is great. Uh, they are on all of them. And I went with a size just small enough to fit under the label, uh, the product label that I put on my wax melts. Um, it came on a roll. Now they do, when I say they have one paper type, they do have several label options though. So various sizes, of course, various shapes. Um, you can get them on rolls or you can get them in sheets. You can get them pre-cut. They have stickers. They have other products besides labels too. In fact, we're going to talk about a couple of them here uh, here shortly. But for me, I prefer the roll labels. One, I find them easier to store. I hang them. And then they also work perfectly for the label dispenser, which is what we're going to talk about here shortly as well. So that was the first label type. As you can see, I went all black on that label with white uh, print. Um, in fact, most of the labels I'm going to show you in this video is actually a similar design just because it goes so much with the theme of, of the labels I actually needed. And then I also went with some new winter collection product labels I'm working on. Now these actually turned out better than I thought they would. Um, I, I just designed these labels like a couple weeks ago. So I was curious how they would print. These are gonna go on white Christmas tumbler jars. Um, and anyways, enough talking, let me just show you what they look like. So hopefully the camera is showing this and not reversing the image. But this one's called Mistletoe Memories. Um, and you can see I went with uh, a standard design on all my winter collection ones, and then I went with colored snowflakes. A few of the snowflakes are colored to match the fragrance. Let me show you another one here. This is Christmas Eve, and it's the same thing. This one's on a roll. And so same design, except for the snowflakes. The few snowflakes, again, are a different color. And I did that across the board with all the different fragrances I'm gonna offer. I ended up putting in a large order for fifth, uh, about 20, 15 to 20 different rolls of winter collection labels because they printed so nicely and I had no complaints. Uh, I had no issues with these at all. I went with three and a half by two and a half because these are going in larger jars than my standard jar uh, and I wanted it to take up a little bit more space. They look great on the white tumbler. So yeah, uh, I, I was really pleased with these. 
I thought the uh, the color, the vibrance, the sheen all looked really good. I also like to look for uh, everything being even on the label. So nothing too far left or too far right or up or down, anything like that. You want everything centered the way you designed it. So far, everything I've seen has come out even. That is one issue I have run into other companies before where things aren't always aligned perfectly. I can't say that I will never have that problem here because printers do get offline a little bit out of alignment. So it happens, but so far I have not had that issue yet. One other sort of related design, um, at least the, the size, I wouldn't have another two and a half by three and a half. These are going to go on dark tumblers. And this is for a new collection I'm working on called the Hideaway Collection. I don't want to give too much away on this one because I'm still working on it, uh, hoping that I actually get them done. But this is kind of the look of that label. Um, it's kind of got a glow on it a little bit. And this is a dark, almost all dark label with some kind of glowish, kind of tannish orange. It's kind of hard to describe it. And I, I doubt this is showing it very well. I've also completely redone this design. But the middle part looks the same. <laughs> the middle part looks the same. Um, here's the only label that I didn't uh, really like the way it looked on my jar. Dark label that I'm also putting on a dark jar. And you could see a little bit of the edge. Like the edge wasn't, it didn't blend enough with the jar. It almost looked like it was kind of sitting up on the jar, if that makes sense. But that's that's going to be common no matter where I get it printed from. Because it's all the same type of label material you would get printed anywhere else. One thing I'm going to be trying different is to print that darker. So I want it to actually be even even a darker. This is kind of a, a gray. I have other dark labels on my dark jars and they look they look great. So I think I might just need to go darker on it. But they're also just big labels. So I might just also extend the label so it wraps a little bit more around or maybe make it smaller. I, I don't know yet. I'm still working on that. But again, that glow, I did not expect the glow to print so well. And it did. So I was really impressed with that. A couple of the labels here I want to talk about. Uh, and these you can call them labels. You can call them stickers. I went with these small, round labels. Now I use these a lot on shipping boxes, small boxes, um, packaging boxes. I'll put them on small little bags, for example. Well, here, I'll, I'll just show you that in a minute. But I just went with about two inch circles. Um, and again, these turned out great. And then the last one is the largest label I ordered. And this is just my logo on pretty big. I don't even remember what it is. It's like three and a half by like six. I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty large and it's for big boxes or big bags. So speaking of bags, let me show you a few bags that like I would use if someone came and picked up an order or if I was doing a show or something like that. So, you know, I've got, I've got your kind of cheap craft bag and I just threw one of these on there just to see what it looked like. But that's one use that you might have for one of those labels. Um, I did the small one again, all this, uh, this platinum looking bag as well. And then I tried the big one on this heavy duty black bag and I thought it turned out pretty good. Now you always have the option of having your bags custom printed. The benefit of the labels is you just buy the labels once and then you can put them anything you want. When you custom design a bag, you better be sure you want that bag. And so and it's also a heavier investment up front. So sometimes, especially starting out, it's just cheaper to get some stickers made and then buy whatever mixture of bags and boxes you want and you just put the stickers on it. So I think that's a great option, especially for those of you that are either smaller in business size or you're just getting started. And honestly, there's no harm in just continuing to do that forever. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great solution. All in all, I was very happy with all of the labels. One of the product I wanted to mention that I did get, and I'm not going to go into details on it too much in this video because I haven't actually used it yet, but I wanted, I wanted to try this packing tape. So I got this really thick packing tape. And this is not your typical, uh, like, regular tape. This is that paper tape that holds much better. This is what you'll see a lot of, like, Amazon boxes and other boxes. Other companies use this as well, but this will stick better. It just does a better job of packing up your boxes. Now, it is a little bit more expensive to buy than your regular tape, but you need much less of it. So one or two strips of this is plenty fine, whereas when I'm using my tape, I just... I go nuts with the tape because I just want to make sure that box stays closed. So I'm excited to try it, but I have not tried it yet. Oh, and then an example of a shipping box. So, you know, I've got my label on top and then I'll put, you know, one sticker on this side. I wanted to see what the other one looked on. It's kind of small, but it's actually kind of cool. I, I like it a little bit. So that's another example of how I use those labels. I just find that labels and stickers come in handy for so many things for just so many reasons. Okay, that's enough about the labels. Let's talk about the label dispenser. First and foremost, it shows up in a big box like this. Well, actually, this came in another box, but this box was inside of it. I was not expecting it to be quite that big. Um, but anyways, yeah, you can see the picture here of it on the side. Again, I did not purchase this. They they offered to send this to me for review on the channel and uh, to give my feedback on it. If you guys like this, I would highly encourage clicking on the link below, creating an account and checking it out. Now, first thing I would say is 
just in my experience, and I'm going to walk you through how to set it up real quick, because if you've never used a piece of equipment like this, it can be a little funky the first time, like a little hard to get used to, like, how do I put this together? But it's actually quite simple. Um, it, and it's just easier if someone shows you, in my opinion, than trying to figure it out on the instructions yourself. So that's my goal in this video. It only takes a couple minutes to put together. Um, and then I'm going to show you a few tips on how to use it. But my number one tip, if you're going to use this, is figure out that break-even point on whether it helps you with time. So if you factor in about 30 seconds to swap out your labels, and in that 30 seconds, you might have already been able to put on five labels, and you don't really need to do more than that, then it's not worth using that machine. So if you're only going to do a few labels at a time, it's not worth trying to use a label dispenser to do it. But if you're going to be doing several batches at once, or in my case, I like to do batches of 24 a lot. Some of you might be 8, 10, 12, 4, or larger batches than 24. Whatever that batch number is, if you don't think it'll be faster for you to use a label dispenser versus just peeling them off yourself and putting them on and then peeling another one off and putting it on, then it's, it's probably not a great investment for you. However, it's very reasonably priced. And especially for me, anything over, I mean, even less than a couple dozen labels, I find it to be effective and fast, especially warning labels. And uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of footage of that, how quickly you can do warning labels with this. So product labels, you, you might have to change them quite a bit per product. So it might not be ideal for product labeling if you don't do a large batches of them. But you generally put the same warning label on across the board, right? So if you put all your candles out that you've made, or you just need to do all, you know, warning labels and all of them at once, just flip them all over. And this thing, man, it really speeds it up. Warning labels used to take me forever. And so, uh, yeah, so it has worked great for me. I'm going to show you a little bit of the footage um, at the end here, but let me show you how to set this up first. All right, guys, whenever you open up that box, uh, you're going to have your main unit right here, which, by the way, has this nice little carry handle inside, which is nice. Um, and then you're going to have a, a few other pieces as well. Uh, this, I'm not going to go through the names of each of these pieces. Honestly, I don't remember what they're all called, but the manual tells you what they're called. But you're going to receive these two pieces. This is part of the uh, section that holds the label roll on. And then this is going to go on the bottom. And that is, it's uh, kind of the trap that helps uh, get the waste material. So as the label's peeled, it rolls back up the waste material for you too. And we'll show, I'll show you that here in a sec. The other thing, of course, it will come with is your power cable. I've already got it plugged in behind me, so it's not showing in picture, but uh, we'll plug it in here in a minute as well. So let's go ahead and turn this around. Now this is the inside. This is the, the guts of uh, the label dispenser. So something I want to point out here is this sensor right there. Now this turns and rotates. It's kind of hard to do while I'm holding them. So this, uh, the sensor's right here. It's like a little camera eye. It turns, it rotates, it goes in and out. The purpose of that is it will work for all sorts of label sizes, which is great. Uh, you can see how long the label holder is and how wide this thing is. So as long as the label is probably not more than what, six inches wide, it, it's going to work, which is, which is fantastic. So to put this together, and then I'll show you how it works. Oops, I need a, I need a roll of labels. I've got some caramel apple candles that we're going to label here because they need label anyway. So first thing you're going to do, if this back piece isn't already on, go ahead and put that on and then go ahead and put on your label, your roll of labels. And then you can go ahead and feed some of your labels out underneath if you want to, just to make it easier to grab later. But the next step is, is to take your other one, slide it on. Hopefully you can see that. So it's, it should fit right in and hold that fairly snug, just like that. Then you're going to take this piece and this is the part that keeps it in place. And you're going to put it on orange side first. Just like this. And then once it's up against it, you're going to push in until the orange disappears. And then you just tighten this down. It's like it's like a quarter turn is all it is. Okay? And you'll see that this allows the labels to come on out and spin freely, but holds it firmly in place. Now hopefully you guys are seeing this okay. Um, and then you're going to just pull your labels up underneath. Okay? Now, you're going to want a little room, so I'm going to go ahead and remove a couple of these first labels. And that would be my first piece of advice, is to go ahead and get take a couple of the labels off. It just makes it easier to attach it to the waste feeder. And then later, just whenever you're going to cut it, uh, just leave some, some room. So you really only have to do this the first time if you, if you remember to leave room. Once you have some room, this is the probably the trickiest part about this, but you get used to it very quickly. The, pull this down. And then you wrap it underneath this. 
Okay, and you don't have to wrap it very far, just enough to kind of grab it from the other side like this. And underneath this, you can't really see it, but this is a magnet, a, a little magnet, and it's a little slot. And that is what this orange piece is for here. Now, careful it's just sliding it in because you'll tear up the label. So just get it back kind of far, and then it just snaps into place, okay? You can actually feel on the back side how far in it is, which is incredibly difficult to explain and show in camera, but it's it's there. The arrow is kind of right up right up to the edge, and that's kind of how you know it's in the right place. And then when you're done with this later, you'll pull it out, which I'll show you here in a minute. That's all there is for setup. You put your label on, you secure it here, you pull your label through, and then you put that lock in, that key. Now you can see I pulled it a little bit, so this first label actually already popped up. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it, just so I don't ruin the fun of watching the first label. So that is it. That's all she wrote as far as the label setup. There you go. Now we need to plug it in. Okay, the plug-in is on the back. After you plug it in, uh, right here, there's two buttons on the front. The bottom one is the power button, and the top one is the feeder. Now, the top one also has two functions besides it, it can be a manual feed or it turns it into an automatic mode. So I'll explain that as we go. First thing you do is just turn it on. Once you hear that incremental beep sound, then you know it's ready to go. It'll be lit up orange. By default, when you turn it on, it is in manual mode. So manual mode simply means when you want to label, you press that button. Let me get this straight here. Probably noticed that my label wasn't exactly straight on this. It works a lot better if you ever actually have everything straight. I had it kind of like leaning this way. Anyways, manual mode simply means when I press that button, I want a label. And you can definitely do it that way. And it is still faster than peeling labels yourself from the roll or a sheet. Oh, and before we do that, remember I mentioned that sensor here. Now I have the sensor pointed way too high. It's like up here. What this sensor does is know when to stop rolling. So it knows when to stop pulling the label up. You want to do it basically where it's just above, pull it far enough where you have enough to grab it with your fingers. So sometimes with a brand new roll of labels, you don't know what that setting might be. You might just try it once and see how you need to adjust it, but it's very simple. You just turn it up or down, not much to it. So let's go ahead and press the manual button once and see how it works. You can see right there and it just perfect amount, just to go ahead and peel off. And because we did manual, it is not going to do anything else until I press it again. So there's that label, just if you're curious, caramel apple, great, great candle. Okay, now let's go ahead and do automatic mode because realistically that's why you would get a machine like this in my opinion. When you are about to do your last label, when you're two labels away, you would wanna turn it back to manual mode. So that way when you peel your last label, it doesn't give you another one. That's the only thing, just try to remember to turn it back to manual mode or shut it off on your last label. Anyways, to change it to automatic mode, you just hold this down until you hear a couple beeps. Now it's in automatic mode. Now to start it, you just press it. Okay. Now after we get this first label, watch what happens. Next up. So you can just start labeling. Take another one. You just keep going down the line. Take another one. Now this actually normally goes even faster than it, than this, but on camera, I kind of working in limited space here, so I'm doing the best I can. I'm um, go ahead and finish up these last two that I have left to do anyways. I only need one more label. So now I'm going to turn it back to manual mode. So now after I grab this last label, it's not going to give me another one, which is exactly what I want. And if you forget, it's not a big deal. You just put the label back, you know, or like once you unwind it, you can just lay the label back down. It's not a big deal. All right. So that's our last caramel apple one that I needed to do today. Well, I've got to do warning labels still, but now that we're done, what do we do now? Well, first thing you do is just turn it off. Or you can just unplug it. And then, as you can see, well, I don't know if the camera's going to show it, but it was catching and rewrapping the waste paper right here. That was the whole purpose of this key, is that it holds it in place the first part, and then it just continues to wrap. So now that we're done, well, I mean, you've got several options here. My favorite option is just to cut it down here closest to the roll. So I'm just going to go snip. Okay, and then the first thing I'm going to do is just take off that waste paper. Oh, first of all, pull this key off. That magnetic key that allow the waste paper just to come right out. There you go. Just throw that away. Now with your remaining labels, you can either wait to roll it up after you got it out, or what I found handy is just spin this. Why it's still on the roll, and wraps it up for you, which is really nice. Then you just undo this little lock. Comes loose. Take this off. 
and you're ready to go. There's your old labels back. That's all there is to it. You can just keep it back fully assembled like this when you're not using it. I mean, how quick is that? How nice is that? So efficient. Now, I've already recorded some footage of me doing some warning labels, so I'll show you that next. But man, those just flew. I did like 40 warning labels, and I swear it was like, I mean, it was like a minute or less. I mean, it was super quick. And then let me just show you the final product here of those caramel apples. Since you saw me put labels on it, might as well show you the final product. So really, really good looking and great smelling candles. So hopefully you guys enjoyed a little look here at Sticker Mule, both the labels and the label dispenser. If you have any other questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about it, if there's something that you think might be helpful for you. Also, one thing I wanted to mention that I did not mention earlier, by far and away, the most impressive thing about working with Sticker Mule to this point was their customer service. They were very, very quick on responses. I've talked to several, I'm trying to remember the names. There was uh, Caitlin and Amanda for sure that I worked the most with, but there were others as well early on. And they were just very on it. They're very responsive. It seemed like I was getting feedback and responses almost 24 seven. So they do not shy away from offering help and assistance. And the process of ordering your labels and uploading your artwork is super simple. You can do it right there from the page. And then if you need to make a change or it's a very simple process, great customer service. Don't forget that link in the description below. If you click that link and set up an account with Sticker Mule, which is free to create the account, but by doing so, you automatically get $10 free store credit to use. So it doesn't hurt to do it. Even if you don't plan on buying anything anytime soon, give it a shot. Start your account and get a free 10 bucks. All right. I'll see you all next time. Thanks.